this student is showing that they are academically capable of doing well in medical school. The Old Pre-Meds Podcast, session number 268. Welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week where I get to take your questions and answer them here on the podcast. Your questions specifically from the pre-med forms over at premedforms.com. If you haven't gone over there to create an account to ask your questions here for the old pre-meds podcast, what are you waiting for? If you like this style of Q&A, I bet you would like the Ask the Dean podcast that I do for MAPT members specifically. In that podcast, I am joined by my MAPT team, Rachel Grubbs, as well as Dr. Scott Wright. You can find those recordings at mapped.tv. And if you're a MAPT member, they are live in the Facebook group every week, as well as public on the first Monday of every month. They're all on MAPT's Facebook and YouTube channels as well. For MCAT Minute, sponsored by Blueprint MCAT, I want to talk about what is a very common issue that students have when they are scheduling their test. And a common issue is when to schedule it. And the common question is, can I take the test in June or July and still be okay? And the answer is yes, with a big asterisk. You need to make sure that you're dedicating enough time to your application as well as your MCAT prep so that you can still turn in your application early enough. Delaying your application until you get your MCAT score back is going to hurt your application timing. Remember, rolling admissions is a thing. If you don't know what that is, you can Google it and learn more about it. So, If you need to take the test in June or July because that's when you're going to be most prepared, go right ahead and do that. But make sure you're trying to get your application in before that. Again, that's the MCAT Minute sponsored by Blueprint Prep MCAT. If you haven't checked out Blueprint MCAT yet, go over to blueprintprep.com slash MCAT and check out their awesome study planner. You go get that for free, you sign up for a free account, you get a half-length diagnostic, full-length one, you get their amazing study planner tool, you let it know how much you're planning on studying, when you're gonna study, all of that kind of good stuff, and it'll spit out a custom study plan for you that you can adjust as needed. Again, that's blueprintprep.com slash MCAT. All right, so let's get into our question today. Our student is wanting to know when to give up, which is a very common question, especially for students who have struggled to begin with. Our student says, hey, I've been trying to live by the old pre-med mottos. I put blinders on and run my own race. I keep moving forward no matter what. No plan B. My question is, do you ever get to a point when enough is enough? After over a decade, I finally went back to college. I've gotten 13 A's out of 16 classes over the past four semesters. If I keep doing well as I have been, as calculated by my school, I could graduate with a 3.8 GPA. However, when my grades are calculated on mapped due to some retakes, my cumulative GPA is under a 2.28 and my science GPA is a 1.99. I only need 34 credits to graduate, but the projection calculator says I need 130 to reach a 3.0. I don't know if a post will even help at this point. My original plan was to get an, a master's in science, but I'm hearing a lot of reasons that won't work. Here's the damage. When I was a teenager, I started off well with a semester on the dean's list. After some family and financial issues, I had a few semesters where I either withdrew from all of my classes or it was too late, so I failed them all. I tried to go back to school a few years later, but was unable to manage it because I had to work several jobs to stay afloat. I'm finally in a position where I have a good job that allows me to work from home and stability enough to focus on school. I'm afraid that it's far too late. The damage is done and may be irrevocable. Any advice is greatly appreciated. So, the answer... When is enough enough, I think is a very important question for students who continue to struggle. For students who continue to struggle, you are failing to show the medical schools that you are academically capable of doing well in medical school. 
for students like this student who are doing great, right? 13 A's out of 16 classes, assuming the other three aren't F's or D's or even C's, hopefully they're not C's, this student is showing that they are academically capable of doing well in medical school. Now, yes, their overall GPA, their cumulative GPA with all of their undergraduate classes isn't pretty. It does not look good. And that's okay because you have shown that you are academically capable right now of doing well in medical school. I talk about this all of the time. Your trends matter a great deal, especially when you, are, when you have a low GPA. I get questions all the time from students with like a 375 GPA, and they're like, my trend is downward. I'm like, you have a 375. Get over it. You're okay. I promise. But a student with a 228 cumulative and a 199 science GPA, there's some really big question marks around that. And so what can you do? Well, this student, it sounds like, is still in their bachelor's program. They're still waiting to finish their first bachelor's degree. And the question will be, when they graduate with a very low GPA, should they continue to take some more classes so that they have a post back GPA, so that they have a graduate GPA, whichever one they may choose? And that question potentially is yes, because you don't want to be filtered out by the medical schools. And that low of a GPA is a potential reason to be filtered out by the medical schools. Now, if they potentially have some different way of analyzing stats, and remember, every medical school can do something differently. The medical schools don't just see the table that you see when you print out your AMCAS application. And if you don't, want to, if you don't know what I mean by that, if you haven't watched any of the application renovation videos yet, I highly recommend you do because I break down applications and I show what that table looks like. That is just a PDF that AMCAS gives students of what their GPA looks like. Medical schools get every single data point and can visualize that data however they may want. They can sort and filter and analyze the data however they want. And so a student like this who really struggled early on but is doing great since will have the opportunity from some schools to be looked at like everyone else. Some schools look at your last 20 hours of science. Some, some schools look at your last 60 hours total. Some schools look at your last 32 hours total. Every school is different. And so if I were this student and I'm talking to you right now, what you should do is reach out to some of the schools that you are interested in and see if they will give you any feedback on how they will look at the data that you are going to present to them in your application. You have put in the hard work. You're doing great. Continue to do that. And really, at the end of the day, to answer the question, when is enough enough? It's number one, when you realize you don't want to be a physician anymore. Or two, when you realize you don't have the academic ability to do well in medical school. So for this student, if you have a 2.28 GPA, and you continue to get C's and B minuses or D's, that is showing that you are not academ academically capable of doing well in medical school. And enough may be enough. Now, there are lots of reasons why you may be struggling. Number one, you just don't have enough time to dedicate to school. If that's the case, stop going to school and digging a deeper hole. Another reason, maybe you have some sort of learning disability that you don't know about yet, that hasn't been diagnosed about yet, so that your study habits and how you sit down and learn isn't being adjusted appropriately for the way that you need to learn. Or number three, you're just not that smart. And that's okay too. <laughs> and when I say you're not that not that smart, it means you just you're not you're not putting your full effort into the classes that you need to be putting your full effort into. 
And there are lots of reasons why that is. You're not interested in the topic. You don't really want to be a doctor. This stuff just comes really hard to you. And no matter how many tutors you have or, or different learning styles that you use, you just can't grasp it. Does that mean you won't be an amazing physician or couldn't be an amazing physician? No. And, and maybe there are some alternative routes to maybe an international medical school where you can go and still be a successful medical student, even though you've struggled in gen chem and organic chemistry, biochemistry, whatever class that you struggle in. Struggling in specific coursework doesn't necessarily mean you are going to be a bad physician. It just means that you, are, you may potentially struggle in medical school. You may continue to struggle in your board exams. And schools don't want to see that. Number one, they don't want to put you through all of that schooling and all of that debt for you to come out on the other end and not be able to pass your boards. That is a bad, bad thing. And number two, it looks bad on the school. The schools don't want to report that you didn't finish medical school, that you dropped out or you were kicked out. That looks bad on the medical school. It's a bad reflection on them. So you have to show academic capability at some point. The question is, when do you pull the plug? And really, that is up to you to determine when enough is enough. Hopefully, this was helpful for you. Again, don't forget to check out Blueprint MCAT. Thanks for sponsoring the MCAT Minute. If you need to push your MCAT test date back a little bit more, you can do that and still be okay as long as you're working on the application as well. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the Old Pre-Meds Podcast.